if it's true, there's a hell. There's a heaven, there's a hell. There's an afterlife. There's a place you can go when you die. And there's only two. One's heaven, one's hell. There's no purgatory. Uh, there's no such thing that never has been, never will be. Uh, the word's not in the Bible. And uh, there, in the Bible, there's only two places people go when they die. One is heaven, the other is hell. And today the message deals with hell fire. You listen very, very carefully. Maybe you're just driving down the road or passing through, and uh, you're hearing this message. Please listen, and may God have mercy upon you and touch your heart that you can be saved. Uh, we're going to um, remind you that we'll be in revival meeting next Thursday and Friday night at the Calvary Baptist Church in Valdez, North Carolina, where Brother Leonard Lindsay is the pastor. And so I hope that you'll be uh, praying for these services and be in these services if you can. We'll be bringing the special message on rock music on Friday night, one week from tonight, at the Calvary Baptist Church, Valdez, North Carolina, where the Leonard Lindsay is the pastor. All right, let's get into the message now. You listen carefully. It's entitled, Hellfire. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Notice this, verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Plural. Torments. Plural. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. For I am tormented in this flame. That man's still there tonight. It's been almost 2,000 years since that was spoken. He's still there tonight. You don't know why we take it so serious? You don't know why we try to go go day and night? Because deep down inside we believe, we believe what this Bible says about hell. Yeah. I wouldn't take a man's word for it that had never been dead. You say, well, I heard a professor say one time there was no hell. How's he know? He ain't never been dead. He don't know what's beyond the grave. He's just hoping there's not. Jesus said there was. Who are you going to believe? Jesus Christ, who was with God before he walked on this earth and went back to God and died for three days and come back to life? Or a man who's 40 years old and never even been dead in the 20th century? Who are you going to believe? Now, if what I'm going to show you tonight and tell you is real, and I know it is, but I'm just using this for an illustration. If what I'm telling you tonight is true, then it's worth giving up everything for to live for Jesus. If what I'm telling you is not true, we're all wasting our time by being here tonight. If what I'm telling you is true, then it's worth any sacrifice we have to make to keep one person out of that place. If it's not true, uh, we have no reason to stand up here and preach. I mean, just I mean, if you're just going to die and that's the end of you, uh, what's use in even knocking ourselves out? You know, just go get you an easy job somewhere. But it is. I've traveled around a lot. I just got back in Washington, D.C. this morning where I've been preaching all week up there. And I've been to several... Country. I preached over in Germany and Ireland and Haiti and up in Canada and, and uh, all of parts of different United States. And uh, I've made some journeys. There's one I'd never want to take. I'd never want to see that place. What I'm going to show you tonight is plenty close enough. No madman in his wildest imagination can imagine it being so bad. It's hell. It's what the Bible says about hell fire. Now, according to the Word of God tonight, the geographical location of hell is in the center of this earth. That's where the Bible says, teaches, that hell is. I can show you, I can prove that to you in the Bible. It's smack down in the middle of this earth. By the way, this is one reason why you know the Bible's true. Because if men would have wrote the Bible like a lot of people say they did, 
man would have never just made up hell and put it in the center of the earth. And you think about that. 2,000, 3,000 years ago when some of that scripture was written, do you think man would have said there's a fire in the center of the earth? Never. Never. You know why? Because when you go out here and dig a hole, the deeper you get, the colder it gets. Who would have ever thought the inside of the world's on fire? But it's a proven fact. Scientists know for a fact now that the earth inside is a hot, blistering fire. hundred times hotter than they used to think it was. I can show you a newspaper article here, from, uh, you know, I think from Berkeley, California, the University of Southern California, where that they now say that the center of the earth is hotter than the surface of the sun. Now, I'm begging you tonight to get saved while you still can. I'm begging you to. I'd get down on my knees and plead with you to get saved here tonight if it would do any good. Hell is an awful, awful, awful place. I heard a story not long ago, or read it rather, uh, about uh, a young, or a couple in a church where an old preacher was preaching revival. And the husband's name was Charles, and his wife's name was Jesse. And this has been years ago, I think down in Texas somewhere. And, and Jesse wanted Charles to get saved real bad. And she, she told the preacher, she said, pray for Charles. I want him to get saved. And Charles wouldn't come to church, and he'd laugh at her. One day she got so serious that she, she begged him and begged him to come to the revival. He wouldn't come. And one day she, he came in, and there was only one plate of food there on the table. And he know, you know what that meant? She wouldn't eat. She wasn't going to eat as long as her husband was on his way to hell. And she put that, that, that ta uh, plate of food there. She wouldn't be happy at church as long as there was a chance that her loved one would wind up in hell. Charles thought she was crazy. But she finally talked him into going to the service that night. And they said that night during the service there was a lot of people come forward and, and come to the altar and was saved that night. And that night... Charles just stood there and it broke Jesse's heart. And she began to weep and cry. She could not stand the thoughts of leaving that church with her husband not saved. She couldn't stand it. She knew if he died, she'd never see him again. She knew if he died, he'd lift up his eyes in hell like that man did there and scream and burn in the flame forever and ever. And she began to cry and she thought, I can't bear to leave this church knowing my husband's not saved. The preacher saw her crying, went over and put his hand on Charles' shoulder. Charles broke down in big tears, started coming up, down his cheeks. And the story said that Charles did go to the altar and did get saved and got born again. Why? Because that woman got a burden for him. She couldn't sleep. She couldn't eat. She couldn't do anything thinking about her loved one going to hell. I'll tell you, if there's anything our churches need in America today, it's to renew our belief in hell fire and that people are not, that are not saved are going there. God's not joking. The song, Rescue the Perishing, Care for the Dying, says it real good. You know, when I was growing up, I used to be afraid of going to hell. I knew, I knew right from wrong. My mother taught me. My mom was a Christian woman. And... Um, as I was growing up through high school, I didn't go to church, and I remember once in a while it crossed my mind. And I used to get out and drive up and down these roads, and I had a little sports car, and I'd take the top down a little MG, what it was, and I'd just fly around these roads back and forth and everything, and deep down inside, I was afraid that one day I was going to have a wreck, or something was going to happen, and I'd wind up lost without God. And you know what I used to tell myself? I used to tell myself, I used to think, well... Everybody else is going there. Most people I know is going to hell. If they can stand it, I can stand it. And I used to think, well, maybe it's not forever. Maybe you just burn up like a piece of paper. Maybe four or five minutes. And I believe I can stand that. And I remember them moms saying it's forever. And the worm don't die. And the fire's not quenched. And I used to, it used to bother me. And I think, one of these days, I'm going to get killed or Jesus is coming back. And I'm going to be all, every few months, maybe that'd come on my mind. That was insane. That was insane. Knowing what I know about hell now, 
I wouldn't waste one more minute if I wasn't saved here tonight. Not one more minute. I wouldn't take the chance of waiting until I got through. I'd grab one of these boys on the front row. I'd say, take me in here. Show me how to get saved. Show me how I can know that I'm saved and ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want to show you. Hell, uh, somebody asks sometimes what the difference between hell is and the lake of fire. Um... The, the difference between hell and the lake of fire is like this. Let me illustrate. Now, the Bible said that when a person dies, if you die tonight and you're not saved, your soul will leave your body immediately. Just like if I died. If I fell over here dead right now, my soul would go out of my body, my soul would go home and be the Lord, and y'all would uh, say, oh, no, and you'd call 911, and they'd come down here, and, and some of you, I hope somebody would cry, and uh, somebody would uh, clap their hands and smile, and uh, or something like that. You know, I may have to pay a few ahead of time to come in and cry when it's over, but you'd say, poor Danny, there he is. Poor old Danny ain't laying there. He's gone. The Bible teaches the second that you die, your soul leaves your body. It goes to the presence of the Lord or it goes to hell. On, uh, at the day of judgment, those souls will come out of hell. They're going to get a body that's going to last forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Just like we're going to have a glorified body that lives in heaven forever. They'll have a body that will burn in hell forever. And then death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire. Man said one time, he said, uh, said, I don't believe that stuff about a person going to hell immediately when they die. Who ever heard of being uh, sent, to, sent to jail or the penitentiary before you even stand before the judge? You stand before the judge, then you're sent to the penitentiary. I beg your pardon. If you went out town here tonight and killed somebody, and the police caught you, they would take you immediately to jail. Immediately. You don't get to wait your day before you, when you stand before the judge. They would take you immediately to jail, just on the spot. Then they would appoint you a court date. On that day, you come out of jail and you stand in front of the judge. Then the judge will pronounce your sentence. And when, when the judge pronounces your sentence, you will go to the penitentiary. At least the judge will say that in that day. He don't now. Uh, a lot of times. But did you know on that day, you will go to the penitentiary. You will go first to jail, then to the penitentiary. That's what hell is. Hell is like the local jail. If you die right now without God, you die without God, you go to hell. Then on judgment day, your soul comes out of, the, out of hell. It stands in front of God, and God pronounces your sentence. Tonight, I tried to get pictures as close as I could to what hell is like for a person that's not saved. Now, there's no way that you can imagine how bad it is, but this is as close as I can show you. All right? And if you fellas will uh, dim the lights here this evening, I want to show you what the Bible says about hell. <laughs> The Lord said there, Depart from me, ye cursed, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Now, now as we think about that tonight, you think about that. Everlasting fire, brother. Fire. You know, they say that fire is the worst pain that a human being can endure. And it's the most terrible pain you can possibly suffer. What you're seeing right there is hot, molten lava coming out of the center of the earth where the Bible says that hell is located. And that is a picture, is exactly what the Bible talks about hell fire. It spews up out of a volcano. Our God is powerful. He makes the rules. When God says something's going to happen, you can make sure that it is going to happen. He's the God that can shake the world. He's the God that can shake the universe. He's the God that decides what's right and what is wrong. He's the God that decides where you will spend eternity. You cannot argue with Him. 
We all saw that terrible collapse of that bridge a few years ago in San Francisco when those cars were literally smashed like tin cans. That was a horrible scene. It was awful. When you think about that, there were people in between there and in between those layers where the car was only about six inches thick. There were people there with their arms and legs smashed. There were people there with laid there for days before they could die. A lot of people say, well, God wouldn't let something like that happen, would he? He did let it happen. You're going to see tonight how God hates sin. You're going to see tonight just what God thinks of adultery and drunkenness and idolatry and lying and all the commandments. You're going to see tonight what God thinks about it. It's no accident that you're here. It's no accident that God allowed these things to happen. People say, well, I just don't see how God could allow somebody to go to hell. Look what God does allow. You see these horrible photos tonight of a young lady who was shot in the face, no chance to live. You say, why do you show us that, preacher? Because I'm telling you, God does allow things to happen. God does allow horrible things. See that little boy? He's chained to the water heater before his mom leaves to go to work. He has no food except a little water beside him. You say, that's awful. That's horrible. Yes, sir, it sure is. But I'm going to tell you about something tonight that's much more horrible. It's much more awful. See that little girl? She's five years old. She weighs 16 pounds. She can barely walk. She's starved to death nearly. He said, Brother Danny, why does God allow things like that? Because this old sin-cursed world, brother, is not happy about it. I'm just telling you tonight, I'd sure hate to be that little kid. But if you die without God, lost without the Lord, there's something worse than that can happen to you, my friend. That woman decided that life wasn't worth it. She just decided to die, to kill herself. There's something worse than that can happen to an individual. You see that little girl? That little girl suffered abuse at the hand of those who are supposed to love her. Where her stepdad got drunk and took a butcher knife and cut her hand right off of her arm. Folks, tonight, that's a horrible thing. She'll never be able to write. She'll never be able to play like other little kids. I'm telling you tonight, if you die without God and lost within your sins, there's a lot, something more terrible than that can happen to you. You see that little girl? She's been beat. You say, preacher, that's horrible. Don't show us that. Listen, I'm trying to get your attention to show you there's something a lot worse than that can happen to you. You better believe it. This world's not a fairy land. See what that is? That's a result of war. Back in World War II, World War I, they didn't have plastic surgery. Some of those fellas come home like that disfigured for life. They didn't have things like we have now to hide it. You say, why are you showing that? To shock you in the reality that there's some terrible things goes on in this world and there's something 10 million times 10 million worse than that that'll happen to an individual that's not saved. When God looks down on this earth tonight, He sees every lie. He hears every lie. He sees every sin. He knows every person that's doing wrong. He knows exactly where you were last night, what you was doing, who you was with, where you went. He knows exactly how crooked you are. God knows it tonight. And do you think God's going to let it go? Do you think God's just going to look over people's sin? Listen, they laugh at God on TV from daylight till dark. They blaspheme His name. Rock and roll singers call Him every name in the book and curse the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think God is going to let it go? No, sir, brother. He said there is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. If we seen that little kid tonight playing with that match, most parents would take a fit. They'd say, no, honey, no. Leave it alone. No, honey, no. Don't play with fire. I'm telling you tonight, if you're here and not saved, you're playing with a lot worse fire than what that little kid is. Lost without God. Not saved. For heaven's sake, don't leave here tonight without being saved. You see that kid? He's been burned. He's in a burn center. And in that burn center there, in this part, that part of the country, they're able to take galls and put it on you. 
In hell, there's no such thing as a hospital. The flames never give up. The worm dieth not. That little girl's learning therapy. Where, uh, see where the little kid here pulled over a hot pan of grease off the stove. And when it did that, hot grease splattered in its face. And as it did, it burned so bad. But you see, here they can make their going to the hospital. Here in this world, they can put gauze on it. Here in this world, they can give them therapy. Here in this world, they can graft skin. Here in this world, they can have relief. That little girl, her and her little brother, were set on fire by their mother. 21-year-old girl, her little four-year-old body, the mother locked them in the bathroom and poured kerosene all around the bathroom and set them on fire to burn them to death. And the neighbors, somebody heard them screaming and called the cops and they come and rescued the kids. Her arms looks like a piece of charcoal. You say, that's awful, preacher. That's awful. That's horrible. Yes, sir, it sure is. But I'm telling you something, ladies and gentlemen. There's something worse than that can happen to you if you're not saved by the grace of God. Years ago when that Buddhist monk set himself on fire, it made world headlines nearly. It was all over the place. People thought, oh, how horrible. The man burned himself. He's on fire. You see the people who shook up around it. But I'm telling you, something worse than that happens every day. Do you realize that two people die every second in this world? Two people. There's been hundreds of people die without God since we've been in church here this evening. And they're like that, except they don't burn up in two or three minutes. If the pain is suffering, goes on and on and on. The Bible said in hell, he lifts up his eyes being in torments. The Bible tells us what it's like. It's like fire shooting up out of the world. The, when a volcano erupts, all that is is hell belching out for the overpopulation and the crowd that's falling into hell every single day. There's over, I think, something like 100,000 people die ever so many hours. Most of them go to hell. You say, well, Brother Danny, I just don't believe that. You're taking a big chance if you don't believe it. You're going against the words of Jesus Christ. You're going against the testimony of history. And you're going against scientific fact that it's right there where the Bible says it is. See, if you were in that car tonight and it caught on fire and you were in there and you could, I mean, maybe you could escape. Maybe somebody would come and rescue you. Maybe, just maybe, just maybe the fire might go out. I'm telling you, if you die in your sins without God and you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, that you're going to a place where the fire don't go out, where you can't get no help, where the 911 call will do no good, where there's no way to roll out and get in the street and roll up in a blanket. You'll burn forever. You'll burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and never get out. You see, a rescue worker can come here. Maybe somebody will get you and take you out of that fire. There will never be a rescue worker bring through, cut through the gates of hell and say, I've come to get you out. It will never happen. It will never happen. It will never happen. You see, if you were in that burning building tonight and you were afraid, chances are you might hear a wonderful sound. You might hear them coming to get you. You might say, they're here. I'm going to jump. Spread out the net. Spread out the net for me. Here I come. I'm getting out. I'm burning. I'm getting out. Maybe some help come. Oh, what a welcome sound that would be. I'm going to tell you tonight, if you die without God and go to hell, you'll never hear that sound. You'll never hear them coming after you. They won't come. You have your chance here tonight. You've got your opportunity tonight to miss hell. I'm going to tell you something tonight. People, they ain't nothing or nobody in this world worth going to hell for. Amen. Listen, I've heard people say, well, I, you know, I just love this girl and I, I ain't going to give her up. There ain't no woman in this world worth going to hell for. There's no man in this world worth going to hell for. There's no amount of money in this world worth going to hell for. If you die and go to hell, you'll curse the day you was born. You'll say, God, 
no. God, no. God, get me out. God, please. But you'll never get out. You'll never get out. If you die without God, it's going to be a horrible scene. Look at here. Do you see that? Verse number 28. It said, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. If we were to look into hell tonight, you would see a picture something like this. You would hear the screams of those in hell fire. what the Bible says about hell. The Bible said there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. You say, I've never heard nothing like this in my life. Isn't it amazing how you live right here in the mountains of North Carolina and never heard what the Bible says about hellfire? You know why? Because the devil don't want you to know what he said. The devil don't want you to know what the Bible said. Hell is an awful, awful place. There is in a geography book. That's not a religious book. That's a science book telling you that what the Bible says about hell is exactly right. You better not go against it. Here in this world, you can get some help. If you die and go to hell without God, you'll, there'll be no help. Here they can give you medicine for relief. There they can't. Here they can give you therapy and the nurses can put gauze around your body. But in hell, there's no medicine. There's no gauze. Here, here in this world, they can just knock you out with drugs. In hell, there'll be no knocking out. In hell, there'll be no party. In hell, there'll be no music. In hell, there'll be no life. And ACDC said, we're on the highway to hell and nobody's going to slow us down. Bon Scott wrote that song a few weeks before he died and Bon Scott died and went to hell. I bet you ain't seen it on the Here they can take chemicals and make skin grafts so the wounds can begin to heal, not in hell. The flames keep coming up. They keep shooting up forever and ever and ever. You see, if you're in a burning building, sooner or later it'll go out. Maybe you can run down the hall, go down the fire escape, jump into a net, but not in hell, brother. Here, maybe somebody can come and get you, but not in hell. Here, you can finally just maybe even die for relief, but in hell, you can't even die. People will want to die, but they can't die. People will beg to die, but they can't die. People, hey, there's people in hell right now saying, oh, God, please give me another chance. God, please help me. God, please. No, God, no. I'm going to church. I'm sorry, but it's too late. Too late, too late, too late, too late. Saddest words you'll ever hear. Look here what the book says. These boats were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Just what the scientists tell you. It's there. It never changes. Here you can get an asbestos suit. And in this asbestos... All right, friend, we're going to have to stop right there. You've been listening to the message on the horrors of hell. I hope and pray that God will use this message to speak to your heart. And uh, I don't know how long you think you can wait. I don't know how long that you think you've got to live. But one day, you've got to die. And I don't care how rich you are, how strong you are, healthy you are, one day you've got to die. And you'll die without God, or you'll die with the Lord and go to heaven. And you'll die without God and go to hell. Why don't you repent? Why don't you just uh, throw up that white flag and surrender to him? And say, I believe that Jesus died on that cross for my sins, and I'm willing to repent and take him and trust him as my Savior. The Bible said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You better think about this, buddy. You better give it some serious thoughts, the most serious thoughts you've ever had in your life, because it is appointed a man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Don't wait too late is my prayer until to, uh, Monday at the same time. This is Danny Castle saying, May the Lord bless you. Castle. His mailing address is Post Office Box 1286, Maryland, North Carolina, 28752. Join us Monday through Friday afternoons at 6 for the Bread from Heaven broadcast with Pastor Danny Castle. Mention our call letters when you write. We are FM 88 UPAR. Through the 